Hey, what's up everyone? This is sgrace21. I just want to do a quick update on my two-wheel drive slash. I achieved 92 miles an hour uh, the first run out with my Hobby Wing 150 amp Pro and my Tacon 1900 KV. Uh, so I did a couple adjustments to hopefully I can hit uh, 100 miles an hour tomorrow uh, when I do my runs. First thing I did, change, I built these fender flares uh, to hopefully redirect the air as much as I possible around the front wheels. Uh, in open wheel vehicles, the wheel spinning causes a lot of dirty air. It dirties up the air a lot, and that's extremely bad for aerodynamics. And I noticed that um, during my runs, the front wheels tend to kind of be out a little past the body. So in order to keep that uh, air cleaner, I built these little fender flares to hopefully clean up that air and uh, help me aerodynamically. But this body is kind of like my test mule body. I'll be ordering another one to trim it out better for uh, once I get everything kind of tweaked and stuff to hopefully get it, uh, the body as, as, as tits as possible to help with aerodynamics. But fingers crossed that this stuff doesn't make the vehicle handle like total crap uh, because when I did my 92 mile an hour run this thing was an easy, easy thing to drive at 92. I have no gyro, I have nothing. My rustler was a dog to handle at that speed. Um, this thing was piece of cake and it's so funny because it's a two-wheel drive slash and I thought this thing was going to be the worst handling thing ever because the high center of gravity but it really was actually quite easy to handle so hopefully this will uh, help me a little more during the arrow you can see the the nose does drag but not during speed it's only under deceleration when I hit the brakes it, boom, it drops back down so uh, that's why it's got kind of some chips and uh, marks there, but that's not during the run. It's during the uh, during the braking. So here's what I've done. I softened up the front springs a little bit. Just uh, actually, you know, did a couple turns out to make the front end a little softer. So that would help me during aerodynamics to keep that body as much as possible low to the ground as much as possible. Also. With the timing, I set the timing, it was advanced by 15 degrees. I advanced it up a little bit to 18.75 degrees. So hopefully I can spool that 1900 kV up a little bit more, a little more to bring a little more RPMs out of it. Um, what else did I do to that? That's pretty much it. Just kind of went through the, the speed control and did a couple of adjustments. But the main thing was just to bring the, the timing up a little bit. And you ask yourself why. Uh, this is why I'm bringing up the timing up a little more. That right there is my new Integi aluminum transmission, oh sorry, gearbox, and a 34 X01 pinion. I had to do a lot of dremeling to make that 34 fit on there. Uh, I'm running a 36 spur, and that's a 34 pinion. I wasn't going to do aluminum uh, gearbox. Just like I, I noted in uh, my other videos, because I'm trying to keep this as much as a budget as possible. But that motor was getting quite warm, uh, especially with the gearing on a 3429 or 3629. And these aluminum gearboxes act like a big uh, uh, motor heat sink too. They do dissipate a lot of heat. They draw a lot of heat away from these motors and uh, bring it into the, the gearbox itself. So. I didn't overheat the motor. I think I maxed out it was like about 155. But hopefully, since now I'm running a 34 instead of a 29 in opinion, I uh, it was time to get aluminum gearbox on there. I mean, it was only 30 bucks shipped to my door, so it's not that bad. I rebuilt the whole transmission uh, or gearbox. I don't know why I keep on calling it transmission, but I rebuilt the the whole uh, gearbox, uh, all new bearings, all new gears, all no, all new teeth, everything. Um, I was running just my uh, my gearbox that I used for multiple years at the racetrack and I thought you know what I have a new uh, gearbox laying around and since I got a new Integi gearbox it was time to put all new bearings and gears in there and uh, put uh, my lube back in there and get, and get that set up um, so hopefully that will help out with speed a little more because it's a little more efficient with new bearings and everything nice and clean inside of a new gearbox um, also I use shims uh, on the A-arms and on the rear hub carriers. Uh, if you know all Traxxas vehicles tend to have um, a lot of slop in between uh, in between the bulkheads and the A-arms and, and so on. So 
Um, I use shims and you can tell this really tightens it up. There's no slop in it anymore. And so same with the rear hub cover carriers. Uh, I shim those and I shim the fronts. So if you want to get uh, as much as that wiggle room out of there as a suspension as much as possible during these high, uh, high speed runs. So I shimmed up the, the rear uh, and I shimmed up the front. I did adjust the rear shocks and I stiffened them up quite a bit. I did a couple of passes in front of my house at a slower speed and I did have these uh, stiffened up too much where it actually started to pogo stick and that's not too good. It would hit a bump and the rear tires would actually leave the ground so that's extremely bad at 90 to 100 miles an hour. So um, I softened them up a little bit. I might need to soften them up just a little more but we will try that out. Uh, I did redid the camber and the toe just a little more to uh, get this baby as straight as possible. But this thing was a dream to drive at that speed. It was so easy. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, tomorrow when I do my runs and with a little bit of higher gearing and uh, a little bit of higher uh, timing, I should uh, hopefully achieve 100 miles an hour tomorrow. Um, not really sure. Like I said, this system only cost me about $127 shipped to my house with the Hobbywing 150 amp and this Tacon motor. A lot of people have been asking me about this motor. It's a Tacon. It's a 1900 kV and the number on it is uh, it's probably hard to tell with this camera. Of course, it won't, it won't uh, focus in. But it is a 3674. So 3674 slash 1900 kV. When you go on Hobby Parts with a Z and uh, look for that motor, type in 3674 slash 1900 kV and you'll find that motor right on there. Um, man, what else did I do to this thing? I think that's it. Uh, just up the gearing, rebuilt the tranny, put the new uh, Integi gearbox in there, did a shitload of uh, dremeling on there to make that, uh, that motor fit in there with that, with that tall, tall gearing. But I do have more in the speed control for uh, timing. It's at 18.75 uh, degrees extra of timing. I think, I believe I can go all the way to, um, I think it's 28 or 30 degrees advanced. So I'm kind of like in the mid range right with it right now. But this motor does get hot. Uh, like I said before, I, I haven't overheated it. It hit about 155 degrees. Um, but now I got taller gearing. A little hotter, uh, you know, a little hotter timing on there. It's, you know, it might uh, bring those temperatures temperatures up to uh, unsafe zone past 160. So that's why I kind of, you know, coughed up the cash a little bit and got the the aluminum gearbox so I can uh, kind of dissipate the the heat from that motor as much as possible. Uh, like I said, I wasn't going to get this because I I want to make this as cheap as possible, but it was only 30 bucks shipped to my door and it will dissipate the heat a lot more from uh, this motor than just plastic will. So, but anyways guys, wish me luck tomorrow and uh, we'll see what this two wheel drive slash can do with a 150 amp ESC from Hobby Wing and a 1900 KV from Tacon Motor with a 36 spur and a 34 pinion from X01. Uh, I'm hoping to get 100 miles an hour this thing. Um, I believe I have the world's fastest two-wheel drive slash. Um, I checked everywhere and 84 is the fastest I can ever find anyone with a two-wheel drive slash. So I hit 92 first time out and uh, hopefully this thing will be 100 miles an hour. And I will be quite excited about that. So this is her. And tell me what you guys think and uh, wish me luck. If you have any questions, don't, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I'm here to help out. I've been getting a lot of questions about this motor and speed control. It's, it seems great. So I don't know how it's going to act with uh, this timing and especially with that gearing. I mean, I went from a 29 pinion to a 34. So I went up five teeth is quite a lot. So we will uh, we'll see what she does. Get one more view of it. And that's her. She is a high center of gravity vehicle. I can stick my foot under here. That's crazy. You can see that. You know, the lowest I can get it is from the front bulkhead to the rear bulkhead. 
the middle is just no man's zone. It's, it's, it's freaking tall. So, uh, but like I said, this thing did handle quite well when I did 92. It was extremely easy to do. So, I'm just hoping that this, this baby will hit 100 on me uh, with, without any issues. Alright guys, you guys take it easy. Happy speed running. Wish you guys all the best of luck. Hopefully there's no part damage for you guys. No wrecks. No empty pockets from these wrecks from what they cause at these speeds. So uh, I'm wishing you guys all the best of luck. And if you have any questions, like I said before, hit me up. And I'll, uh, I'll do the best I can to help you out. And I'm happy to help. So alright you guys, take care.